Honey Robin with OxyDry. And uh, I've got a small job to do today. And um, as you can see, uh, just uh, this um, loft area and this bedroom and into the closet over here, about 330 square feet. The carpet's in overall very good shape, actually. It is actually a wool Berber, so I'll get to that in a sec, and what, what, why that's important. Um, but first of all, the carpet did not look like it needed to be vacuumed, but I did, of course. And um, the lady had vacuumed it with her Dyson. Everybody's always so um, convinced that a Dyson is a great vacuum, but this is what my vacuum got out after she had vacuumed it with a Dyson. And um, where are we now? Oh. If you can see there, it's actually about half, about halfway up there, and that is almost entirely skin cells. And one of the things about the Berber is because it has the, you know, has the the loop, um, dust and junk gets under the loop, and it's very hard for uh, to get it out. And that's actually one of the reasons why Berbers have a tendency to wick. So um, enthusiastically, when they get <coughs> steam clean, because the uh, loop will hold moisture under it and it doesn't dry um, as effectively as if it was a, um, a carpet with a yarn that you know, sticks up, because the loop is over and they they're but you know, like like kind of like that together. I guess you could say um, the moisture will tend to stick under. Or hold underneath the, the loop and uh, that contributes to the to the wicking effect so uh, and that's one of the reasons why the low moisture works so very well uh, and cleaning the the wool or, or the berber style carpeting whether it be wool or not because um, it doesn't wash the dirt underneath the yarn as a, as much as the steam cleaning does or hot water extraction um, but anyway uh, and one of the weaknesses of Hot water extraction uh, is dealing with Berber carpets. But, of course, we don't have any issue with that. Now, you see that there's a nasty stain here. Uh, really ugly one over there. Something happening over here. And over at the doorway there. That's actually, the dog has been up chucking. He got sick and he's about a, I guess he's about a 40 to 50 pound dog. Yeah, so we've got some up chucks to deal with. Because it's wool, there are certain things you cannot use on wool. You cannot put a peroxide on wool because it will, or can, take the color out of wool. So peroxide, bad. Now I've treated it with, believe it or not, a Haitian cotton cleaner. Because I've discovered that the Haitian cotton cleaners will work very well on dealing with either urine or upchuck on carpeting and is safe on wool. So I've done that. And I also did, just a minute ago, I did also uh, spray some CLO2, which I have in this trigger sprayer on there. So uh, it's got a, a more concentrated CLO2 on those spots. And I have CLO2 in my uh, uh, solution tank. I'm using the Just Gone product in this case because uh, I still have a fair amount and um, put it at 10 ounces per gallon which is normally where I put it at. Um, overall the carpet as I said does look fine except for these upchuck stains and it is possible that these stains are permanent because uh, the wool of course is an animal protein. It's a hair and the uh, bile can actually break down and uh, I guess you could say corrode or um, almost digest the uh, wool and alter the color and all kinds of strange things happen. So whenever you run into a situation, if you're a carpet cleaner and you run into a situation where you've got animal stains on a wool, make sure that you qualify with the customer that they understand that you may not be able to resolve the staining issue or the discoloration because if it's discolored the actual wool at the you know uh, it's not just something on the wool but has actually altered the color the color and the texture and the of the wool then uh, you can't fix it 
But let's see what happens on this case. Um, in this case, uh, hopefully, we'll, I'll get them out. And we'll see what happens, but no promises. We just do the best we can. Okay, let's uh, give it a go. Uh-huh. Well, what do you know? Don't know if you can see that, but it's gone. Now, there may be something left. But usually, that's the uh, result that I get. So we got another one right ahead of me. Can you see that? Go over it, adding a little bit more solution. Now it's of course frothed up a little bit more because the uh, Haitian cotton shampoo, but um, I actually kind of discovered that by accident. I was just a few couple of years ago, I was dealing with a urine stain and I thought, well, why wouldn't that work? Because it does work for getting rid of the yellowing on, uh, or stopping the yellowing from happening with the white cotton furniture. So I thought, well, maybe it'll work because it's got some, um, is it sulfur dioxide or something like that in there? It's some, some kind of a sulfur in there that um, um, gets rid of the yellowing or stops yellowing from happening on the cotton. So I started fiddling around with that a little bit and discovered that it, in most cases, will take the yellow staining out caused by urine. So there you go. Now some of the Haitian cotton shampoos out there actually don't smell very good, so you can put a odorizer in there, like odor cider or whatever, to improve that if you like, but anyway. No, I do seem to have a stain, little dark spot right there. Come back to that in a sec. Overall, the carpet actually looking pretty darn good. So nice and quiet, and smooth. This machine is and easily it moves. Swiss made this machine actually, belt driven, which is unusual. Most rotaries are not belt driven. Another stain right there, gone. Did you notice that? Just gone, just gone. Wow. Huh. Pretty cool. And uh, I can get in there. Scoot down there. You now, the nice thing about the CL02 is um, that it is. Uh, going to kill bacteria and germs on contact. It actually kills pretty much everything. And um, being able to do that is uh, obviously an advantage for the customer. And steam cleaning does not do that. It will kill some germs and bacteria, but for the majority of bacteria, all it does is give them a nice warm bath, and then they multiply. And that's been proven. Um, there's that first stain I had right there. It's a little bit darker there because, uh, of course, it's damper. But it does appear that the discoloration is gone. I'm cleaning with an Iron Man cotton. I'm really liking them. 
Uh, I find that they are almost always the go-to pad now. John Klesnick, BonnetPro.com. He sells great products. And um, I'm using one of his cleaners in my machine right now. I'm using, I think, um, I think it's Surround Omega. I'm using, in this case, um, because it is neutral pH for the wool, was what I was honestly thinking. I don't want to be using anything too much alkaline. Alkaline or alkaline? Tomato, tomato. Not sure how you pronounce that. If you're British, it's aluminium. And if, it's, if you're not, it's aluminium. Maybe they're the right, saying it the right. After all, it's their language, right? <laughs> anyway. Uh, this carpet will be dry within about an hour or less. Although the spots where I did the treatment for the upchuck, they would probably take uh, two or three hours before they dry. But there's that. Other than being a little bit darker because it's damper, that, that's going to be gone. That's going to be totally gone. So we got another stain right ahead of me. Right there. So I wasn't sure if this was actually an up truck or not. But I assumed that it was. It smells a little bit woolly in here now because of course the wool getting wet. It smells like a sheep. A wet sheep. <laughs> So, here's my last spot to deal with. Let's see what happens with this one. You don't run into uh, <clears throat> the wool carpeting too often, at least I don't. But uh, you do need to understand when you do run into them to be careful about the cleaning product that you're cleaning it with. Um, if you go too alkaline, although you may not see the damage that occurs while you're cleaning it, what happens is it actually will deteriorate the yarn and it'll start degrading rather rapidly later. And as a professional, your job is to clean the carpet, but not damage the carpet. And although um, many people will clean carpeting, wool carpeting, with the product they might normally use on synthetic carpeting, not all carpet cleaners are actually safe to use on wool. Even if they clean it, down the road, there may be damage that you actually caused. Well, the customer probably won't even know it, realize that, nor will you. So, don't do that. Get the right product. Be a pro. Now this was a small enough job that I certainly could have gone and grabbed my auric and done it with that instead, but I actually, although I do that occasionally, I'm always preferring to use my rotary because for one thing it's got a little more weight to it, obviously, and um, plus I rather than spray down and then clean like I would have to do with the arc because it has no tank I really do prefer to apply my solution 
with the tank on the machine because I can then control exactly how much I'm applying on every area of the carpet. And I, I really find that's lost my power. Uh, an important aspect to um, doing the best job possible. So I know that a lot of people will just use a rotary without the tank, but um, I've done that years ago, but I went back and forth on that for a while, and in the end I determined that using the tank was the most efficient and effective way to, to clean. That was my conclusion anyway. But it's a matter of, I mean, it doesn't, other than personal preference, there's no, it's not like there's a right or a wrong way in that case. Carpet's going to look really good. Customer's going to be very happy with this. She was actually, I, she told me she was not, didn't have great expectations for these marks, so. She's going to be thrilled with what she sees, even if there is a little bit of something that remains from damage to the wool from the bile. And this will be looking just fine. Her doggie was a rescue from Mexico. Really nice guy. Oh, he's very friendly. But uh, looks like a it's a cross between a looks like it's a cross between a pit bull and a um, a boxer. Totally goofy. Very friendly. Crawl right in my lap. <laughs> Got hair all over me. Okay, I'm actually done. That's it. I won't have to post vacuum this. Easy peasy. Here we go.